In this video, we will talk about the secant function and how to graph y equals secant of x. In a right triangle, secant of angle theta equals the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. This is the abbreviation we use and we say that secant of angle theta equals hypotenuse divided by adjacent side. The secant function is the reciprocal of the cosine function because cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by hypotenuse while secant is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. On the unit circle, the values of cosine are represented by the x-coordinates of the points on the unit circle. And we write that cosine of angle theta equals x. For example, cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. And cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Now, to find secant of an angle theta using the unit circle, we divide 1 by x. And this is because 1 over x is the reciprocal of x. So then, let's find the few values of the secant using this formula and the unit circle. We can start with the angle of 0, and at this angle, x equals 1. Then, secant of 0 equals 1 over 1, which is 1. Now, let's continue with the angle pi over 6. At this angle, x equals square root of 3 over 2. Then, secant of pi over 6 equals 1 over square root of 3 over 2. If we rewrite this fraction as 1 divided by square root of 3 over 2, then this equals to 1 times 2 over square root of 3. So, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of this fraction. Then 1 times 2 over square root of 3 is 2 over square root of 3, which is approximately 1.15. Now, let's continue with the angle of pi over 4. At this angle, x is square root of 2 over 2. Then secant of pi over 4 equals 1 over square root of 2 over 2. This will be equal to 2 over square root of 2, which is approximately 1.4. At pi over 3, x is 1 half. Then secant of pi over 3 equals 1 over 1 half, which equals 2. Then at pi over 2, x is 0. And secant of pi over 2 is 1 over 0, which is undefined. So, what we see so far is that as the angle increases from 0 to pi over 2, the value of the secant also increases. And as we get closer to pi over 2, the function increases to infinity, and at pi over 2, the function is undefined. Also notice that at 0, both cosine and secant have the value of 1. Now, if we continue with more angles, then we will see that at pi, both the secant and the cosine have the value of negative 1, and at 3 pi over 2, the secant will be undefined. Now, let's talk about the trigonometric function y equals secant of x, where x is the independent variable and it represents angles in radians, and y is the dependent variable and it represents the values of the secant function. To graph it, we will start the rectangular coordinate system and we will plot the angles in radians along the x-axis. So here we have the x-axis with the angles in radians, and at the points where the function is undefined, like pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on, the graph will have vertical asymptotes. So if we look at this x-axis, then we will have vertical asymptotes at negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2, positive 3 pi over 2, and so on. Closer to these asymptotes, 
the function will be approaching either positive infinity or negative infinity. We can draw these asymptotes and then we can use point plotting to draw the graph. However, there is another approach we can use to graph the secant function and that is to use the graph of the cosine function as a guide. For this, first we need to graph the cosine function. At 0, cosine is 1, so we will plot the point 0, 1. At pi over 2, cosine is 0, at pi is negative 1, at 3 pi over 2 is 0, and at 2 pi is positive 1. Now, on the unit circle, if from the positive x-axis we move clockwise, we will have negative angles. Down here we will have negative pi over 2, and here cosine is 0, then negative pi, and here cosine is negative 1, then negative 3 pi over 2, and here cosine is 0. So we will plot the points in the rectangular coordinate system, and now we will connect them to form the graph of the cosine function. And because this is just a helping graph, we will make it all dotted. So here we have the graph, and now notice that at the points where the cosine function crosses the x-axis, the secant function will have vertical asymptotes. At these points, the secant function is undefined, so I will draw the vertical asymptotes. So here I have them, and I made them all dotted, as they will help us graph the secant function. Now take a look at the maximum and the minimum points of the cosine function. At these points, secant has the same value. So these will be the points where the graphs connect. Now let's analyze what happens to the secant function between two consecutive asymptotes. Here we have a few values of the secant function, and at 0, secant is 1. I will plot this point on the y-axis, and then notice that as the angle increases, the value of the secant increases too. This means that as we get closer to pi over 2, the function will approach positive infinity. So here we have this part of the graph, and when we get closer to negative pi over 2, the function also approaches positive infinity. So we have this part of the graph, and now let's look what happens between these two consecutive asymptotes. At pi, secant is negative 1. Then from this point, to the left and to the right, the function will approach negative infinity. And now this pattern will continue to the left and to the right indefinitely. So here we have the graph of the secant function, and now let's discuss a few properties. The period of this function is 2 pi, just like the period of the cosine function. The domain is all real numbers except odd multiples of pi over 2. This means that at the numbers like pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so on, the function will be undefined. The range represents all real numbers such that y is greater than or equal to 1, or y is less than or equal to negative 1. So if in the middle we have the cosine function, then starting with 1 and above, or starting with negative 1 and below, we will have the secant function. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.